So welcome to Schools. Schools is an edtech startup which is recognized by the government of India, helping schools, training institutes and trainers meet verified, genuinely interested parents. We are also in collaboration with the INA Trust of India, from where uh, Subhash Chandra Bose's installation is taking place. We've had two events at FIKI with them, and uh, we're happy to be progressing in helping parents to search, explore, and compare multiple institutes, scheduling and appointments with schools. Schools is encouraging learning, knowledge-based webinars, and uh, events, and many leaders from all sectors and verticals, including players, participants, and you know people from LSE, London, all these people are joining us and sharing their views to inspire uh, thousands of children you know, across uh, schools, pan India. Our panelists have a great opportunity to share all their views and connect with our extensive parent community. And our guest speaker today, for the fish tank series is Hira Mehta. Um, she is an Insta Live interviewer, talk show series, Goop Shoop Diaries with people from all walks of life, and a one minute self motivation reality check series podcaster. Uh, she's the author of four books, published books, part of theater group, Ek Jute Young Talent Company, also. And she's a freelance script, story writer, actor, proofreader, motivational speaker, filmmaker of small films. She also is a consultant and uh, does proofread annual reports, etc. She's been an act effective administrator, coordinator with 38 years of experience as manager of corporate communication, ICICI Bank. And uh, she's been holding a lot of, uh, you know, even management diplomas from national institutes and the voiceover dubbing from Sugar Media. So all those children who are interested in lit fests and filmmaking challenges and are interested in this creative part can ask her a lot of questions. She has been invited as a speaker to forums to inspire through her experiences, um, you know, Be Happy Initiative at Lokhandwala, Andheri, where the residents talk, uh, take over the streets from 7 to 10 a.m. We'll be asking her about all these questions. Um, now, Hiraji, you're an author of four books. Uh, how yeah. did you start this journey of writing and kaisi rahi aapki puri journey aap samjhaye hamare nanne munne bacche aapse seekhna chahenge. Bohut sare young writers, aspiring writers, you know, who come to us with these questions ki mein kaise ban jau, uh, where are the challenges in publishing? So writing, uh, I used to love to write anyway. Or poetry, likna bhi mujhe bada, uh, you know, pasand hai. So main likhte rehti thi. I used to write it even as a kid. And I still, uh, you know, in a notebook, I used to do all that uh, from the beginning, childhood se. But it sort of developed in me a little later in life. And uh, I started writing stories. So when I started writing stories, I used to believe ke aapko likhna chahiye aur usko flesh out karna chahiye. You know, whatever thoughts come to you, keep writing them down because that is not the end uh, result that you want to see. It takes a little time for you to actually get there. So if you're interested in writing, my first tip would be start putting down thoughts. Because aapne likna shuru kar diya na, to next day, aap usko fir side mein rakh That's what I do. I normally write stuff and I leave it aside. Like, you know, you marinate a dish. You keep it aside for a few uh, hours or a few days, and then you go back to it. You will see uh, fresh ideas coming to you, fresh thoughts coming to you. You will better the language. You will better your thought. And you know, that's how I started writing. So I used to write short stories, uh, most of the time in the lunchtime in my office. And then I used to mail them off to me. And then on the weekend when I had my days off, I used to sit and flesh them out. So that's how I started writing. मतलब चलते फिरते जो एक जर्नल में आप लिखना शुरू कर दें सुबह उठके आपने जो जो किया उसको लिखे हैं उसके बाद उसको आप एक बार सोने से पहले देख के फ्लैश आउट करें या उसमें कुछ एडिशन करें कि ये छूट गया या ये नहीं छूटा and then a story will be made. Is that what you're trying to say? Yes, exactly what I'm trying to say. It's not easy to, you know, writing is not an easy craft, but everybody is a writer. Everybody is a storyteller. So uh, that you have to understand that everybody is a storyteller. Our life is also a story. So we are living each day. Uh, something new is happening in our life. So all these things are experiences. 
experiences turn into stories agar aap dekhoge na to everywhere that you see even if you see a film if you read a book if you read a story it will have been colored by some experience of life so that is what i feel that when you're writing you know you don't try to match up two people who are you know celebrated authors or you know they've written 10 books and 20 books and how do i reach there you probably may never reach there but your creativity the or, the, or what you have inside you will definitely come out on paper absolutely that's what i feel you know sometimes um, sometimes back when we started these series you know over a period of time sometimes we have about you know 600 uh, children participating sometimes the parents don't allow them so i had to uh, thought in me that are we actually making that change so the ceo of school srinivas ji told me nidhi ji he should manage to change one child's life that is enough for me you don't worry it doesn't matter he says that change is important ki jo bacche sun rahe hain wo kuch zarur seekh ke jaye so long as you can add meaning to their lives and answer their questions वो कितनी मुश्किलों के बावजूद यू नो एक फोन लेके हर एक बच्चे के पास लैपटॉप नहीं होता रिमोट एरियाज में यू नो आके हम से सीखना चाहते हैं तो जो आपने कहा वो बिल्कुल सही है हमारा खुद का जीवन एक कहानी है यू आर ऑल्सो पॉडकास्टर पहले तो इन बच्चों को समझाइए पॉडकास्टर होता क्या है हाउ डू यू लाइक टू मोटिवेट एंड इंस्पायर दम थ्रू योर यू नो सोशल मीडिया पेजेस kis tarah aap karti hain so let me add to what you just said you know you said that you know if you inspire one life also that is important and that is my mantra of life jo maine likhna shuru kiya aur aaj agar main ye bolu ki meri char kitabe hain kitne logon ne khareedi is not important for me yes. even agar panch log 10 log ne meri kitab utha li पढ़ ली और अच्छी लगी तो आई हैव अचीव वॉट आई वॉन्टेड टू अचीव इन लाइफ और दूसरा क्या है ना आप पॉडकास्ट की बात करें ऐसे ही मैंने पॉडकास्ट शुरू किया बिकॉज अ फ्रेंड ऑफ मी वॉज टेलिंग मी के तुम इतनी एलिक्वेंट हो तुम्हें बातें करना बहुत पसंद है मुझे बातें करना बहुत पसंद है कोई मुझे रोक एवरी समबडी टू स्टॉप मी फ्रॉम टॉकिंग और मेकिंग अ फ्रेंड इन अ ट्रेन और यू नो टॉकिंग टू समबडी एंड स्टार्टिंग अ कॉन्वर्सेशन मुझे उस चीजों से डर नहीं लगता इनफैक्ट आई वॉन्ट टू टॉक टू मोर पीपल मेक मोर फ्रेंड जहां मैं जाती हूँ दस और लोगों से मिलके फेसबुक फ्रेंड्स या यू नो सोशल मीडिया फ्रेंड्स बना लेती हूँ बिकॉज दैट इज माई लव फॉर इंटरक्टिंग एंड नेटवर्किंग विद पीपल तो फिर मैंने सोचा कि क्यों नहीं मैं एक पॉडकास्ट शुरू करूँ सो so, मैंने पहले पॉडकास्ट uh, नहीं शुरू किया था मैंने वो गपशप डायरी शुरू की इन दी पैंडमिक क्योंकि पैंडमिक में मेरी जैसी पर्सन हु लव टू मीट पीपल सडनली घर में एकदम बंद हो गए तो मुझे लगा कि अब मैं लोगों से कैसे मिलूँ तो फिर मैंने एक इंस्टा लाई मेरी नीस के साथ जस्ट फॉर फन बोला चल ना हम लोग एक पॉडकास्ट आई मीन एक सीरीज करते हैं एक लाइव करते हैं इंस्टा पे जस्ट टू सी हाउ इट गोज दैट्स हाउ आई स्टार्टेड तो मैंने पहला इंटरव्यू उसके साथ किया फिर और दोस्तों को जोड़ा और दोस्तों को जोड़ा ऐसे करके ड्यूरिंग द पेंडेमिक आई कम्प्लीटेड ऑलमोस्ट वन हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी एपिसोड ऑफ इंटरव्यूज देन आई स्टार्ट थिंकिंग अब मैंने इतने सारे इंटरव्यूज है तो और लोगों को भी ये बातें सुननी चाहिए बिकॉज दीज वर ऑल पीपल फ्रॉम ऑल वॉक्स ऑफ लाइफ एवरीबडी वॉज देर एवरी काइंड ऑफ पर्सन वॉज देर इट वॉज नॉट सेलिब्रिटीज इट वॉज नॉर्मल अपने जैसे लोग जो कुछ कुछ अच्छा कर रहे हैं जो यू नो डिफरेंट कर रहे हैं तो दे वर टॉकिंग अबाउट दम सेल्स सो देन आई कन्वर्ट इज दैट इन टू पॉडकास्ट सो आई स्टार्टेड क्रिएटिंग अ पॉडकास्ट That's how my podcast journey happened. Our podcast की journey फिर uh, slowly अब मैं season वन season टू और season थ्री में मैं सिर्फ वन एंड हाफ मिनट्स ऑफ मोटिवेशन कर रही हूँ बिकॉज लोगों को वक्त नहीं है सुनने के लिए सो पॉडकास्ट बेसिकली इज एन ऑडियो जो आप रिकॉर्ड करके लोगों आज लोग ऑन द रन सुनते हैं उन्हें देखने का शायद वक्त ना मिले जैसे कि हम पहले YouTube में फिल्में देखते थे या कुछ यू नो देखते थे आज लोग रास्ते में इोन लगा के सुन के भी अपना काम कर सकते हैं चल सकते हैं सो दिस बेसिकली कॉन्वर्सेशन ऑन द गो विच यू कैन हियर एंड इट्स वेरी इजी अगर कोई बच्चा भी पॉडकास्ट चालू कर यू नो शुरू करना चाहता है तो हो सकता है बिकॉज देर आर सो मेनी फ्री पोर्टल्स नाउ वे यू कैन होस्ट योर पॉडकास्ट हेलो हेलो बेटा ऑल दोस हु जॉइन विल टेक योर क्वेश्चंस इन अ व्हाइल आर देयर एनी क्वेश्चंस इन द चैट बॉक्स नो दिस इज जस्ट गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम टू स्कूल्स ऑल राइट टेल अस अबाउट द नेम्स ऑफ योर बुक्स हु पब्लिश्ड देम एंड आल्सो अबाउट योर एक्टिंग करियर हीरा जी 
okay so <laughs> my acting career is not the greatest in the world in the sense that main pehle iske bare mein baat karungi because you know acting to me uh, i'm i'm a entertainment buff so basically uh, you know if you know me you'll know that i love to do different things in life i love dance so i learned dance i i wanted to act so a few friends uh, who know i love to act they would pull me in to do little little bits in their short films so i must have done about maybe 7 8 9 10 short films in which i'm a mother character and i'm doing it but there's one film that i'm very proud of which is called the blue helmet which is now on hotstar which makes me really very proud and that's a short film made by by my friend and uh, it talks about a social evil so uh, i started my acting career is just that that any friend who calls me and says i need you to do a small little thing for me i say yes and i'm i'm there so that's my acting career i did in the beginning uh, do a lot of auditions try to take it up as a profession but then uh, slowly i realized that you know that was not what i really wanted to do for the rest of my life it is a passion but not a passion enough to make it into a career so i started doing keeping it as one of my passions which i do whenever i give i'm given an opportunity and you asked me about my books well i started writing uh, my first book also again because my friends pushed me because they said that uh, now that you're a senior and you have so much to share and you why don't you uh, write a book so my first book is called young and 60 where i talk about uh, you know senior life living senior life in the now happy senior life so happy senior living so that's that's one book which i've written then the and in fact the first book i wrote was the short stories which i talked about which What i used to pen what inspired you to write your first book uh, it was it was basically my friends also who pushed me and i always wanted to write and my first book it got published so that gave me um you know um a sort of happiness and a, a thing that maybe i do have something in me because i won a contest in a lit fest i won a contest where my short stories were picked up and published by them so that gave me a uh, you know a, a feeling that yes you know i have it in me so mm-hmm. my second book came up that's the young and 60 then after that i wrote uh, reboot life in the pandemic and in the pandemic i pushed my daughter to write because she loves to tell stories so probably a little from me so i pushed her to write them and i used to flesh them out with her so we spent our time together sitting and talking about those stories making them better and then we put it together into a book we called uh, you know tales of friendship so that's those are the four books that i have now already i have just told you the name of all her books uh, there is one child anvita reddy who's asking how did you become a famous actor i think she means author so uh, um, ma'am has just shared that you joined a little late but i'll ask her to share it again <laughs> i'm sorry Let's- with a little story ma'am if you can uh, just share a small story with the children i'll be so grateful uh, from the book one yeah, of oh, yeah. yes i'll read this i'll read a bit of the story because the yeah. stories are about uh, you know three to four pages long and that would be a little too long yeah, but I'll, something I'll that you, appeals to them before we yes, go so to i will i will tell you a story most of these these stories which are called friendship tales are about that in the end friendship works out you know if you have friends everything works out so that's the story this is about a camel in the uh, the camel in the story lived in a zoo at the edge of the town the zoo was a lovely place with large cages of animals and birds there were leopards elephants camels snakes and a hippopotamus too children were running around happily people were feeding the ducks and the swans were swimming in the beautiful lake the duck turned up its nose at the monkey in the cage next to the lake the monkey was busy playing and an old tire hung from the top of the cage his cage was next to the camels he stuck his tongue out at the camel the camel turned away and chewed on the grass in the small cage next to the camel lived a very lazy leopard he laughed as the camel kept chewing on the grass the leopard got all the attention from the children and no one came near the camel's cage this made the camel very jealous he said i've got to get him out from here he is annoying me and very noisy so he made a plan so he started throwing grass into his cage to make it dirty but the leopard happily made a bed out of it and went to sleep when this po- plan foiled the camel made another plan he threw water in his cage but the wily leopard rolled around in the water and enjoyed it because he was feeling hot 
the camel thought to himself, oh, let me try one more final plan. Let me tease him. So he made noises throughout the night, but that did not work. The leopard ultimately gave up. Fed up, the camel called out to the leopard and said, who do you think you are showing off like this to the children? So the leopard said, I'm an animal. So the camel said, do you think you're funny? I've tried so many times to make you angry. How come you didn't react? The leopard said, I'm not like you. I could see you're doing bad things. But do you think my life is easy? My life is even worse than yours. You're allowed to roam free in your cage, but not me. I want to sleep on the tree branch, but every night I'm locked up in a small cage at the back. Children don't love me. They just come to stare and make fun of me, ask me to growl. I also get pulled to make, you know, to have a bath each day. You know, cats don't like to get wet. We just lick ourselves clean. So uh, basically the story goes on to say that ultimately uh, they get separated because of the noise they are making and uh, they become friends. But it's too late because people who visit the zoo started complaining to the zookeeper that the camel had turned mad and so they were separated. The camel became very sad and realized that troubling another, he had put himself into trouble. He missed his friend and now he began as he began to give rides in the, in the zoo, he'd make it a point to stop near the leopard's cage and say hello to his friend, yeah. refusing to move for a very long time. The zookeeper was surprised and people would stand near the leopard's cage to see this funny sight. The loud rumbling, grunting and roars of the two soon became the talk of the town. It was not long before the camel was moved back close to his friend. So that's, that's how the story true. ends. True. And the moral is that my daughter wrote this moral, which she says, be aware of your surroundings first and understand when what somebody else's life is like before you hurt another person. So these are the kind of stories that are in this book, which are all about friendship. How beautiful this is, you know. And also the message that even animals have feelings. Yes. Somewhere I think that also is the underlying current of this. What I got um, across as the message from this was that they also think, they also feel. Yes. I mean, you and they also to a stray dog by just throwing it is one way or you just place it there. There is, there is a soul inside that animal, you know. Respect that. I think yes. uh, respect every soul because you never know... Uh, what 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 takes you where i mean it's difficult to tell them about karma it's not fair to put it in their heads but all of us know as adults that it is karma that plays out so you know even if you children when you go and sometimes you find somebody shivering in the cold uh, even if you give a blanket or your own sweater or your own cardigan i think you should do that with feeling not because you have to do it Yes. Or just say namaste to that person and then, you know, I always touch their feet and give it to them. That's something my mother had ingrained in me as a child. And I always, you know, I think this is the right time to share this. It just came to my mind. Yes, I'm very, animal. very passionate about animals. I'm really passionate about animals. And I, and I feel it is their earth as much as it is ours. So they also have yes. friendships. They also have... Uh, uh, you know, a, a right to live in a free forest rather than be caged in, in, in you know, cages like uh, we are caging them. It's not fair, really. And I think the Gen X needs to do something about it, needs to mull about this and think about this and maybe write to the Prime Minister to have a ministry for animals. I think that should be coming next. As far as India is concerned, we are not looking into animal rights. I mean, somebody has to. Yes, God and you know, what, given us we talk about animals. Part. Yes, Nidhi, I agree with you on that, but I also agree that the children need to understand a little bit more about compassion, you know. And, yeah. you know, we talked about uh, environment, and they are uh, doing uh, all your kids are doing a wonderful job when you all are talking about environment and all that. But I don't think that, you know, going and hugging a tree and making a chain helps. You really need to do little, little things. Like I see a pot on every ledge. It's a um, simple thing. If you don't have a garden in your house, you don't have a big place. One little pot, one small pot, which you nurture, will teach you how to, uh, you know, appreciate nature. You know, I feel that. Correct, correct. Absolutely correct. 
So tell us about your, uh, <clears throat> what kind of people have you invited to podcast and uh, what is happening next? What is your message now? So what's happening next in my life is that, uh, you know, I believe that, you know, uh, we all live in not just a black and white life. There is always a gray area in our life, you know, and we have that option to choose, you know, the advantage of, I love staying in the gray area because it gives me an option to choose the road I want to take and there's nothing Correct. right or nothing wrong about it, you know. And that's basically also what my Reboot Life uh, book talks about, you know, that you have choices. And when you make good choices, and choices, you know, uh, Nidhi, one thing I've realized about choices is that what you choose today, you will, you will definitely regret tomorrow. And there's nothing wrong in that. Because, you know, it's just a learning. It's something that you can't change, but you can better. So I yeah. just believe in that, you know, that you've got to better yourself every time that you do something. And when you look back, if you've done something wrong, try to do a little bit better or change it, you know, that's what I believe. And what so one of the children are asking where they can pick up your books, if you can tell them. And also <laughs> my next question is, how do you go about after writing, publishing it? That's very important for them to understand. Okay, the, whole, so, uh, the whole concept of going, finishing, if you could explain that. you know. Because... Right. So I'll tell you, it's very tough. The, the publishing industry is very cruel, especially to new authors. And it is definitely very cruel. You've got to accept that you're, you know, there is a process where most of the big publishing houses, there was a time when writing books was a, was a handful of people. And therefore publishing houses did not have any criteria. And, you know, as the world progresses, there become rules, regulations, criteria. We will not do this kind of a book. We will not do that kind of a book. It has to be a good book. And, you know, uh, earlier what used to happen is they used to take the book and maybe just you know, read through it and do it. Today, they want to have a creative input in it also. They want to make sure that everything is right, you know, and nothing spoken is, is going to cause problems or, you know, things like that. So to get a good publisher is a very difficult thing. Today, the market is open for self-publishing. So I decided to go by self-publishing because I knew that no, no, I didn't have the bandwidth or the connects to big publishing houses and I was also not very sure whether they would, you know, accept my book. And this process takes almost a year for you if you go via a big publisher. And at the end of the day, they might not even see your book because there are lakhs and lakhs of people today who are writing. It, it's just unbelievable. If you'll go on to the, like my books are on Amazon and Flipkart, but that is also through self-publishing. So what I did was I chose a self-publisher I gave him my book, they designed it for me and they put it out with the IBS and or whatever the requirements are to host it on a platform like and Amazon. And how much does, do these self-publishers charge? Because there may be little authors who are in the process okay. of... So, so if you're, uh, you know, it all depends on uh, the publisher, but you need to choose right because if you choose any publisher, then you might, you know, see one thing, let me be very clear. You can get your book published but marketing is something that is the most the most crucial part of writing a book is marketing. And marketing, again, is a big cost. So if you're talking about cost, each publisher, I will say, would range between 12000 to almost 50000 It depends on which kind of a, uh, uh, you know, publisher you choose but remember that the publisher will put your put will put a number on it which is supposed to be the market number the ISBN number uh, and it'll they'll put it on all the platforms for you but ultimately uh, oh I love this question how can you be confident to go on stage and <laughs> okay I'm a soft skills trainers too so if you want me I'll come and teach give you a big lecture on all the soft skills anytime you want but yes okay so to come back to the books first you must remember that if you're doing a self-publishing, there is the marketing part of it depends on you. You will have to use the social media. You will have to use your uh, connects and get your book out. Marketing is another additional cost. Getting your book onto a bookstore is an additional cost. So it is not, yes, it is. Maybe <laughs> it is. So uh, my books are not in the show, in the stores because- I, I mean, the ones that you see on the airport and all are all placed there after giving them money. Yes, they are by pub, by top publishers. See, those are the top publish the top publishing agencies who take your book and who do the entire gamut for you. And it is a costly affair. They pay you. Yes, if your book is picked up by a publisher, they will pay you for uh, for your book, and they will do all the rest of the activities. But to get your book to them and to get them 
to pick up your book to publish is in itself a big deal a big exercise mm -hmm. you may or may not get there so do, i would say don't get disheartened you know do it for yourself but then when you go to them they they kind of polish your book and they kind of do everything or no they sort of suggest yes they sort of suggest that do this now see they will not take uh hira mehta may not be picked up but nidhi will be picked up because nidhi is known okay she has got a volume of work behind her in her career okay she's a personality a moment a personality writes a book then these people are a little more uh, okay to read it people like us have to wait in the line for our books to be read by them and then if they feel it's worth it then they will approach you so if you're wait if you're willing to do that then be prepared for a very long wait but if you want to see your book out there like i wanted to see my book out there in my lifetime i'm not getting younger i said i'm going to pop spend a little money on publishing it myself but what about these little children aren't there journals where they can put in their articles poems if they want to write i mean inko koi to sune to wo aasan tarika kya hai inke liye uh most of the portals do have poetry writing and uh, you know uh, competitions and if you go on the net and if you look for you know poetry contests or uh, putting yes, up poetry many many are happening yes. many are there but the but again here the issue is that the sad part is that even writing is becoming a business so today people yes. approach me because they've seen a few of my books and they've followed me on instagram they will offer me things like uh, you know give a poem to us in our anthology but to get one poem published i have to pay them 2000 bucks and then i have to purchase four books so you know then i think to myself is it worth doing that or spending that money on just getting my book out and putting it up on the platform even if 10 people see it or 10 people pick it up i'm happy i have spent my money fruitfully but putting one poem and spending that much money just to get it in a, a collection doesn't make sense to me so you have to be very careful on what your end thing if you written one poem and want to be happy get it published out there are lots of people who do anthologies go ahead print it out there and you know tell people yes my poem is in this book but if you really want to put out an entire collection then please go for self publishing or try a publisher who knows you may be lucky i may not be lucky you may be lucky absolutely and okay. uh, now to my next question what is happy senior what is the importance of self reliance according to you how important is it uh, today uh, for seniors in the in this context see i believe that uh, you know a new approach or a value add is something that everyone should should have at every age you know you should be ready to change your thinking your attitude i think that is what makes me uh, more tuned in to what is happening in uh, my uh, in my surroundings mm -hmm. and in my life because i choose to change along with time if you do not choose to change along with time and especially to the seniors i always say do not say hamare zamane mein ye hota tha or when we were young we did this or as parents i always tell parents please do not say when you become a parent you will know what it means to be a parent mm. because see we all have gone through the same thing right we told the same thing to our parents every generation comes with a new um thought a new process mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it is definitely up to us how we accept it and how we decide right. to use it so that is my uh, thought is that everyone needs to change with time and you cannot just sit to the seniors i say you cannot just sit on the garden bench and talk about the days gone by and oh, that's so beautiful that's so beautiful you need to look forward to rebooting your life Yes. Um, and this child wants to know what we should do for great friendship. Um, any other I'll question you want I'll to ask? Tell. I'll tell you what you should do for friendship. You should do what I do. Keep start a conversation with anybody and everybody you meet, who you like. You have to be sensible. You just can't. Uh, you know, I always say, uh, my friends used to tell me that if you make one more friend in the local train going to work we are going to throw you out of the train because i had this habit to start a conversation with everybody who came into the compartment so i will i'll tell you my name of the books but uh, you know you start a conversation but be careful not to give too many personal information don't give too much of personal information in your first conversation you have a conversation on a general thing that happens around you you start a conversation you make a friend and that's how you will make friendships but you have to be careful because today's world is a little different than what what is used to be in our time we were very um, 
you know, we didn't have fears of uh, the kind of things that are happening in the world today. So if you want to make a friend, go ahead, start a conversation. The first thing is start a conversation. And yes, my books are Young and 60, Twisted Tales and More, Reboot Life, and Tales of Friendship. They're all on Amazon and Flipkart. Beautiful. Uh, tell me uh, about, um, uh, you know, the other question that is coming to us. How do you build confidence? You've been giving so many motivational quotes. Please answer this uh, child's question. Okay, so somebody even asked Sometimes about teachers. Are, teachers don't tell you what they are too inhibited or shy to ask their parents and teachers. They'd much rather ask a person that they hardly know. Yeah, I agree, you know, because you know what, then the, the judgment part of it is out. You know what happens with parents? I, I'm, I appreciate what the children are going through because, you know, as parents, we love our children so much that we can find no fault in them. In fact, the moment they say that we have a problem, we will bark at them and say, why do you have this problem? You should not be having this problem. That is the biggest thing that I've realized our, as parents, we should not be doing is allowing the child to express what they want to say first, listen. Most important is listen. Now, if you're saying confidence, how do I build my confidence? Or how do I get over stage fright? I've, as I've said again, start by talking to people around you. You don't have to get onto a stage right away. And you do not have to, you know, become a public speaker. Everybody has to start a conversation. The moment you start talking to people, the more confidence you will build in yourself. You know, if like today I'm talking to you, I have met you for the first time, but I'm talking to you, am I not? I'm opening my heart out to you and to everybody who's listening. So that's important. Talk. And you know, it doesn't matter. Don't feel uh, frightened about somebody judging you because people in the world are going to judge you irrespective of what you say, who you are and where you are. That you please keep in mind because people are, everybody has a different thought process, thought, different belief, different cultures. We come from different uh, homes. So there are going to be differences and those differences should not make you feel that, you know, you cannot express yourself. That's what I feel. Absolutely. And how important do you think social media is to convey their messages? Do you think children should, uh, you know, have a blog or vlog of their own? Or I'm like, a total advocate. I am a total yes. advocate of social media. I think that uh, if, when parents say that, uh, you know, we talked, uh, I'm sorry, I may sound, uh, uh, you know, not too good to the parents, but, uh, you know, the thing is that we as parents stopped our children hundred and thousand times, don't be on the a laptop, don't be on the screen time, don't be this. But the pandemic taught us that we all were on mm -hmm. mobiles, laptops, and we were on that screen for two years. And we really never thought about that aspect mm -hmm. and again we're back to do not spend too much time on on you know on laptop and all but there is a plethora of information there is a plethora of knowledge there's a plethora of inspiration there's so much out there which you can uh, you know uh, learn on your own but yes be careful what you do because today there is a there's a darkness also on the internet which is very scary which you need to be aware of you, you know, you just need to tell the children that there is this out there also and do not go into that space. And if you want to check out that space, let me check it out with you. I mean, come, we'll do it together. You see this, how bad it is or how good it is. But if you, if you tell somebody not to do something, even if you tell me not to do something, I am going to go and check it out. Am I not? Maybe we all are like that. The moment somebody tells us, don't do this, the, the first thing we will do is that. So we, do, we have to be careful about that aspect. But I think social media is the best place to be if you use it carefully, if you use it sensibly. You know, absolutely. Another question I want to ask you to share with us: um, What is the mind of? Uh, please rephrase your question, Radhika Goswami. I'm not able to understand uh, food for animals. Kajal, I'm not able to understand. Rephrase it. Meanwhile, I want to ask you about this Be Happy initiative at Lokanwala. I'm really intrigued to find out. Uh, what was this and how did you do this uh, kind of okay, so social be happy. change? Because bringing about social change is very important in society. Very, 
Yes. So this be happy happened about uh, three or four years before the pandemic. For two years before the pandemic, uh, we used to. Um, there's a lovely association that we have in our uh, uh, in our area where I live. I live in Lokhanwala Andheri West, and we have a back road which is completely a beautiful long uh, stretch of land. I mean, a road. And so they uh, there's a, a group of people. I won't profess that I was the one who uh, thought about this initiative, but I was a part of the team. And every Sunday, we used to put up a stage there. We used to invite celebrities. We used to invite people people we knew and we used to have them perform and speak to the audience as also along the entire stretch of the road there were a lot of stalls food stalls uh, entertainment stalls people were singing people were dancing people were playing cricket skating uh, name it and people were doing it and we had a stage performance happening also which a friend of mine and I used to host and we used to have a great time interacting with the community and mm. that was basically what the whole be happy uh, concept was. So at seven o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock in the morning, the traffic was not allowed on that stretch of the road. The traffic mm. was stopped. After 10, the police would open up the road again and we would all go home very happy and energized. And this concept, if you'll see recently, our um, one of our top commissioner of police had uh, started, uh, he's also, I think, somewhere in our area, probably must have seen Be Happy. And he picked this up idea. And, you know, we are having these free streets. So these free streets are basically what Be Happy was, but in a bigger way. The free Absolutely. I think it's very important to be happy even for children because there's so much of uh, mental depression that we're hearing about these days. Yes. Oh, even in, in their home, somebody is unhappy. It kind of percolates to the child. So it is very important to be internally happy. Yes. Rather than externally happy. I also want to ask you as a last question, what are some of the causes do you feel you want to support uh, going ahead in life? What are the causes that you've always felt strongly about, uh, Hiraji? And uh, it's wonderful to know you're rebooting life, but how does one actually reboot life? Because there may be some... You know, parents also listening to us, you know, who may be going I think, you know, yeah, yeah, I agree with you, Nidhi. The thing is that it's easy to write a book, but to actually be what you write. I have always believed that whatever I write, I, I subscribe by it. So I have this friend of mine who, uh, Selish Mishra, who runs this beautiful home, uh, residence home uh, in Nalasopara, where he has dementia and Alzheimer's residents living there. And, he's, and he looks after them. So... Uh, I started getting connected to that cause of dementia. So my way of doing it was to do interviews with him, uh, to talk about it on my social media, to make people aware about it. And, uh, you know, I even have a chapter of it in my book, Young and 60. I'm sure I'd love to call him on schools to share his thoughts. You must uh, connect me to him. I will. I you will know, because I've been looking for people like this who are actually not just talking, but just doing something about these causes, you know, you know, yes. who are making you know, this change happen. We are very, very passionate about this at schools that we need you know, to call Nidhi. such people. And Nidhi, you know, when you talk about women empowerment, I always say women don't need to be empowered, you know, because we've got to understand that everybody says women empower women, empower women, empower women. I believe, and I have, you know, been a part of another uh, small little local group of women. And we used to do these workshops and talks. And I always say that, Every woman is empowered and she always will do things within her culture, her religion, her uh, upbringing. You know, you can't make it a universal uh, statement that women empowerment, you know, you have to understand that there are, we are all different. And especially in our country, we have got such diverse cultures, such diverse thought processes. We need to respect it all, you know. So if, if a woman is not ready to get out of the house, then you have to understand why she's not ready to get out of the house. You just can't keep saying, you get out of the house, get out of the house. So I say to children also that when you're in the home, at least first thing is respect your parents, understand the, 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 you know, the whole um, thought that they come with, the cultures, the, uh, you know, the thoughts that they're sharing with you. You may have other thoughts because you are, you're seeing the new world. But at the same time, if you want to really bring in those new thoughts, please let it be in unison. Don't battle the old thoughts. Streamline them, I would say. You know, I say that when nowadays people are getting married inter uh, intercaste, interculture. Like I am a, I also married into a family, and I'm a, I'm an outsider in the family in, in terms of my religion. 
but I never felt that because I, whatever I brought in was appreciated by my in-laws. You know, they appreciated that, okay, she has this thought process, you know, and that's what we need to do, you know. In this one child is asking us why we need glucose, I mean. In why do we context? need glucose? Uh, I, I, I haven't really followed. For what are you asking this, Peta? And for food, uh, Radhika, she wants to say, you can ask your question in Hindi if that's a problem. I'm not, yes. I'm not getting your question. Is it uh, with regard to animals? Is it regard to... Yes, we probably, see, this is another thing we have to understand is that, uh, you know, uh, don't try to change people's food habits. Yeah, you know, you are uh, today. The world is going towards vegan. We are we appreciate it, but there are hardcore people like me who still want their meat. There's nothing wrong in that. You see, it's a circle of life. We were taught about it that this animal eats this animal, this animal eats this animal, this animal eats this animal, this animal eats this animal. So it's a circle of life. Don't question God's circle of life. Choose what is best for you. Leave other people to do what they want. You know. You know, don't don't uh, uh, force uh, the world to change. Just change yourself to what you feel is best for you, your body, your family, yourself, your thought process. Don't try to change the world. First, we have to change. You know, we have to understand whether it's good enough for me to do that. I can only, I can say uh, on a forum, public forum and say, you know, do this, do that. But do I do it? If I do it, then I earn the right to speak. That is what I feel, you know. Very true. Please raise your hand. We'll have you on screen. You can ask a question. We are happy to answer. And I'm happy to answer even afterwards. <laughs> uh -huh. If you're feeling shy or something like that. But this question I'm not understanding. Radhika, do you want to say something? Is there any other child who wants to ask something? That's what I say. Now, don't feel shy. Yes, Radhika, you, you're here. Don't I can see you. Please, please ask your question. Good morning. Yes? I can't, I can't hear you. I can't see you either. Prasad, can you help us? Do you want to ask a question, any child? You've been asking several questions, Radhika, but I cannot understand what you're saying. I think she say. left. I saw that uh, she left. All right. All right, fine. Uh, um, so I think we're going to end now. We run out of time. Children have limited time on behalf of uh, um, our CEO, Srinivasji. I'd like to thank you. Uh, Hiraji for joining us for this very, very inspiring conversation today. Thank you so much. All the children here, you're going to get your uh, lovely certificates from the UN and with the star on them. I'll ask Prasad to show the review page and I'll request Hira ma'am also to write a review on schools. Prasad, can we have that online, please? Uh, can you show that? You just go to schools and uh, there is a review. You must post in your review as to how you like this session as okay, a there's, there's, uh, Nidhi, while we are seeing that, Kratika is asking, how do I get confident to talk to people I'm scared of? Why should uh -huh. we be scared you of anything? Answer that. Let me just show them this. Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, after that, we'll continue. Okay. So you just go to write a review and then you share okay. your review that well, how you liked interacting with Hira ma'am. Hira ma'am can write how she liked interacting with us. This okay. is just... A small gesture for the organizers who are doing India at 75 and Azadi Kamrit Mahotsav to just say thank you and you'll get a star on your certificate. Uh, yes, uh, Ravi Jindal, you can ask your question. Ma'am. Yes, Ravi. Good morning, ma'am. Ma'am, I'm proud of many people, but they say a lot in the house. Why is that? Because what is it? You are comfortable in your house. You don't know the people of the outside. You don't know them, you don't know them. That's why they are scared. But as I have said before, always start the conversation in your hands. And I say this, if you are sitting in 10 people, and if you can't start the conversation in 10 people, then you just smile. And whatever they say, you can hear it. And 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 you can
कॉन्वर्सेशन ऐड कर दीजिए आपको कॉन्वर्सेशन शुरू करने की जरूरत नहीं होती है आप जहां कहीं पे भी हो किसी के साथ भी हो तो आप सुन के उसमें से थोड़े से पॉइंट्स होते हैं या थोड़े से जो थॉट्स होते हैं अपने थॉट्स उस वक्त वहां पे बोलने चाहिए ऐसे शुरू कीजिए आप तो आपको ऑटोमेटिकली कॉन्फिडेंस आना शुरू हो जाएगा और इवन लुक इन टू अर एंड स्टार्ट टॉकिंग टू यूर सेल्फ यस बट यू नोट मेरे Nidhi, mirror doesn't really help because you are seeing yourself and you're confident with yourself. Sometimes you know you say, "Ha, I'm so you know like I am the queen of uh, conversations. I can talk nineteen to a dozen to my friend. But if someone new comes, then a little bit of nerves will get you. There's no problem. As I said, smile, do it, just listen. And if you feel something, yes, then you know add on. Slowly, slowly, it will happen. Yes, Jehak. Okay, ma'am. Ma'am, if uh, anybody has any type of, क्या? Ma'am, अगर किसी को बोलने में ऐसा लगता है कि अगर मैंने कुछ गलत बोल दिया तो मेरे को बहुत ज़्यादा ऐसा लगा। गलत क्या था? होता है? गलत उसके लिए होता है। आप जो बोल रहे हो वो आप सही बोल रहे हो ना? आप जो बोल रहे हो वो सोच समझ के बोल रहे हो ना? देखो, हाँ. लोगों को तो हर चीज़ में प्रॉब्लम होनी ही है। हर कोई आपसे सहमत नहीं होगा वो हमेशा कॉन्वर्सेशन का मतलब क्या होता है दो लोगों का थॉट प्रोसेस यानी कि मैं अगर ये बोलू कि ये काला है और आप बोलो सफेद है तो वही कॉन्वर्सेशन होता है और उसमें आप आ जाओ बीच में और बोलो कि ओ ओके इट इज रेड तो कॉन्वर्सेशन का मतलब निकलता है आप आप एक्सपेक्ट नहीं करो नहीं करना चाहिए कि जो मैं बोल रही हूँ वो वो उसको समझना चाहिए और एक्सेप्ट करना चाहिए ये हमारी बस सबसे बड़ी गलती होती है कॉन्वर्सेशन का मतलब क्या है कि एक दूसरे की बात सुनना उसमें से अच्छी चीजें निकालना अपने थॉट्स बताना अपने सेल्फ को एक्सप्रेस करना और हमको यही भी ये भी सीखना है कि कब हमें उस कॉन्वर्सेशन को क्लोज करना चाहिए यानी कि बस अब इससे आगे मैं आर्ग्यू नहीं करने वाली और कोई अब शब्द नहीं बोलना यस मैन गलत नहीं बोलोगे तो किसी को क्यों आप आप गलती से कुछ ऐसा बोल दो जो उसके समझ नहीं आ रहा उसको री एक्सप्लेन कर सकते हो एग्जैक्टली मैम मैम जब हम किसी बाहर बाहर बात करते हैं तो हमें अंदर से डर होता है कि हम कुछ गलत बोल दें तो हमें वो डर अपने अंदर से निकालना कैसे है वही तो मैं बोल रही हूँ सी डर होना ही नहीं चाहिए मैं वही बोल रही हूँ कि अगर आप किसी से बात कर रहे हो और आपको डर लग रहा है कि वो आपकी बात समझ नहीं पाएगा या सुन नहीं पाएगा वो पहले आपको ये ध्यान में रखना है कि आप क्या बोल रहे हो किससे बात कर रहे हो डर कभी डर होना इज नॉर्मल हर इंसान में डर होता है अगर आज भी आप मुझे स्टेज पे रख दो कहीं पे 500 लोग के बीच में तो मेरे स्टमक में बोलते ना बटरफ्लाई फ्लटर होने वाले ही है पहले तीन मिनट तो तुम्हें तो 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 हो हक होगा ही चाहे मैं कितनी भी टैलेंटेड हूँ क्योंकि ये जो चीज होती है ना ये नॉर्मल है हमारे अंदर की जो एक इनर वॉइस में मानती हूँ उसको जो हमें बताता है कि ये ये टाइम लगेगा ये गलत हो रहा है सो यू हैव टू बी प्रिपेयर डर तो लगेगा डर लगने से क्या होता है इट डजेंट मैटर बट स्पीक अगर डर भी लगे तो पहले शुरू तो करो बोलना अगर आप हर बार डर के कुछ नहीं बोलोगे तो फिर दैट दैट डर इज गोइंग टू बिकम मोर 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 इन योर एंड इट ग्रो इन योर यस ओके ग्रो होगा अभी को तुम डर नहीं कर बात करते समय अभी आप तो अभी तो तुम डर ही नहीं मुझसे बात करने में सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट स्टेप क्या आप बात करो हाँ आपने अपना चेहरा नहीं दिखाया हो कि फाइन बट आपने बोला तो सही ना आप हर संडे जुड़ा करो हर एक से मिला करो बात करा करो तो इसी तरह बेटा आपका डर निकल जाएगा एग्जैक्टली exactly. अगले संडे वी हैव द वेरी फेमस दीपा किरण स्टोरी टेलर शी इज गोइंग टू बी हियर डोंट मिस दैट राइट योर रिव्यूज and on that note i'd like to thank you we're absolutely out of time thank you hira ji for sparing your time thank you to give us thank a nice you. thank you so thank much you. remember to send in your reviews on our school page you. before you get the certificates namaskar thank you for watching thank you thank you ma'am thank you thank, thank you, you children you.